Okay, so make sure you're here, okay? Make sure you're on time. If you're not on time, then you're gonna wait outside, okay? And if you're not here, okay, you're gonna use Google Classroom, which you're already familiar with, okay? Each and every day, I will post what happens in class on Google Classroom. So it'll be in the stream, okay, which you guys are familiar with, right? So it'll show up in here, okay, in the stream, it'll say, you know, posted something. It'll either be an assignment if that's what we worked on, or it'll be um, a link to the YouTube video for that particular day, right? Um, so when, um, when I post something, just look for it here. Now, I also do have the YouTube channel that you can see the videos on directly, okay? It's called Codare Science. Okay, if you have your phone out, by the way, I have no problem with your phone being out, obviously, you can have that out all the time. Okay, um, if you can, you want to search for that and subscribe, that's great, you don't have to, okay? I don't make a cent off of this channel, all right? Because, well, I only have 500 subscribers or something like that, doesn't matter, that's not what it's for, okay? Um, but, okay, you can, you can subscribe uh, if you want, if not, don't worry, because it's going to be linked every day from Google Classroom to the video that happened that particular day, okay? So if you have to stay home, this is gonna be super important for you, okay? So you'll go to Google Classroom from home, okay? And you'll go, oh, Mr. Critter posted what we did today. I'm gonna to click on that. I'm gonna watch what they did. And while you're watching that, you'll hear me say, okay, now we're working on this worksheet. You'll go to your worksheet package, okay? And you'll look up that, that page. You'll work on it from home. If you have questions, then you'll email me, okay? And say, Mr. Critter, I was working on you know, worksheet number five, and I don't get question 10. Can you help me with that? Or something like that. Okay? But it'll be your responsibility to do that if you have to self-isolate, stay home, or whatever. Okay? That's how that will work. Everybody clear with that? Okay. Now, that means that it won't be live. Okay? It'll be right after this class. I'll post the video for this class. Okay? So it'll be you know, 10, 15 or so. It'll be ready, and you can watch it from home. Since you're at home because you're probably sick, you probably slept in anyway. It'll be perfect. You wake up and you can do science. All right? So uh, that's how that will work, okay? And everything you'll need will be in here. And again, uh, in the class materials part is where you'll find the notes package, okay? So if I'm, you know, going off the notes, you can look at your notes package and follow along, okay? If we're doing worksheets, you'll use them from here, okay? It's all on there. It's, it'll be easy to find uh, when you need it. Right, so that's the th those are the resources that will be available to you. Okay, so um, you've got Google Classroom, you've got the YouTube channel. Okay, each day I'm going to post the materials or the activities. Okay, including if we do a lab. Okay, if you miss a lab, I video the lab. I've had them all videoed for a while. Okay, I post the video of it, and you can do the lab, get the observations from the video. Okay, so it's even possible if you miss a lab to do it that way. Obviously, if you come back and you're like Mr. Coder, do you still have the materials for the lab? If I do, then you can do the lab at lunchtime if you want. Okay, that's up to you. Okay, but obviously it's you know, easier to just do it when, when you have the stuff there. Okay, uh, so using those resources, I expect that you come back to class caught up. Now, if you actually have COVID and you have to stay home and you've got really bad symptoms and everything, obviously I'm, I'm gonna be forgiving. Okay, if you've been you know, feverish and to the point of delirium, you probably weren't really doing a whole lot of effective schoolwork during that time. I'm gonna be understanding about that. Okay, um, but if it's something else, you know, you just had to stay home, but you're well, okay, you just had to stay home because that was the responsible thing to do, okay, then I expect that you stay caught up, okay? All right, and like I say, guys, if you need help, you've got questions, you've got to do it, and you're doing it from home, just send me an email, okay? I'm always checking it, okay? I'll reply as soon as I can, okay? If you're emailing me at, uh, you know, 10, 30, 11 o'clock at night, it will be the next morning when I email you. Okay, or if you're like the kid who was constantly doing that during the quarantine at two in the morning, I would email him when I got up at five. Yeah. I don't get mad, I get even. Okay. Wake me up at two in the morning, I'll wake you up at five when I get up. Okay. So, uh, yeah, just know that if you email me late at night, I'm not answering it. Okay. Um, all right, questions on how that will work? Pretty straightforward there? Okay, you guys all know how to use that stuff. So. Okay, uh, in terms of being in the classroom, which is so nice because we're actually back in the classroom again. Okay, uh, respect is the key. You heard Mrs. O talk about that this morning. Okay, uh, the classroom is an environment where everyone should feel safe, included, and welcome. Respect is the key. I will show respect to you. I expect the same in return, and the same should go for your classmates. Okay, we shouldn't have anybody being put down. Okay, any of those types of behaviors, right? They're unacceptable here. All right. Um, my kind of key phrase, if I need your attention right away, is listen up, 
Okay, so if you hear the words listen up, then I expect your eyes forward, okay, earbuds out, okay, whatever else, and your full and undivided attention, okay, so that I can, you know, get started on teaching or tell you about what we're doing that day or, you know, whatever. But if I say listen up, I need your full and undivided attention up front. Okay, um, there's different kinds of work, okay, in Science 10. Some of it's assigned and it's just for practice, okay. I won't be checking it or taking it in. Okay. Some of it is assigned for marks. That would be things like um, actual assignments, projects, and lab reports. Okay. Those things will come in for marks. There will be a due date for those, and you'll have to have them in on the due date. Okay. Um, but the practice stuff that we do in class, that's not going to be taken in for marks. Okay. So I don't do homework checks okay, or anything like that. If there's an assignment, it'll have a due date. Otherwise, it's up to you. Okay. So when work's assigned in class, it is to be completed. Okay. If I have you working on something in class, it's not so that you can be busy and I can go on social media and see what's going on in the world. I'm not going to do that. Okay. If I've assigned you work, it's work that I intend to help you with. Okay. I'll probably be circulating or doing some work at my desk. Okay. If you have questions, that's when to ask because that's our time to practice and acquire our skills. Okay. That's the kind of work that's not going to get checked. Okay, not going to get assigned stuff we're working on in class. If you don't finish it in class, it's probably a good idea to finish it at home. Okay, but again, it's not something I'm going to check. Okay, um, some of the work uh, will be, sorry, it says check this homework. Those will be assignments. Okay, all, however, should be completed. You're responsible for your own academic success. If I find you're not completing your work, then you'll be spending some time with me at lunch hour until it's all caught up. That's very unpleasant. Okay, because then you lose all your social time. And so do I. And well, actually, that's not true because I have no life in here all the time. But okay, uh, for you, it would suck. So uh, make sure you're getting your work done, okay? Because the worst thing that can happen is then I have to call home and say, you know, little Johnny's not getting his work done. And now I've got him in my classroom. And, you know, he's sitting here at lunch and uh, he's got to get it done. You know, I hate to tell you this, but he's got a whole bunch of things he hasn't done. Your parents don't want that phone call, okay? I don't want to have to make that phone call. Okay. But I've only had a couple of occasions in 22 years of teaching where the parent has told me, I don't care. Okay. It's really sad, actually. But, uh, most of the time, they're like, really? What can I do to help? You don't want them to say that to me because I have all kinds of ideas you're not going to like. Okay. So just get your work done on your own. Okay. If you're responsible for it, then we don't have to cross that bridge. Okay. Um, so for exams, okay, should you by some act of God achieve a mark that is less than 50% on an exam, and that doesn't happen very often, okay, um, I, you will come in for a help session. There'll be uh, some makeup work to do. I will make sure that you understand the stuff, and at that point, uh, we can look at the mark. But here's what you need to understand about Science 10. Rewrites are not real things, okay? There are none, okay? I'll give you two weeks' notice of a unit exam. That's plenty of time to prepare. Okay. Should you choose not to prepare and roll the dice on it, that's a poor choice, but it's your choice. Okay. There aren't any rewrites. Okay. So make sure you get studied up, okay. come and ask me questions, okay. uh, things like that. All right, um, fairness versus equality. I will always try to be fair to everybody. That does not mean that things are always going to be equal because obviously everybody is different. Okay? Two people could have the same problem, like they didn't get their assignment done. Okay? However, the circumstances as to why may be very different. So in being fair to one student, okay, I might treat them differently. The example I always use happened now, 12 years ago now. Um, an assignment was due and that was back when we actually handed in paper. Um, and I had two kids come up to my desk and like, Mr. Cooper, I don't have my assignment done. And I was like, why? two weeks to do that. How did you not get that done? Well, the first guy, to his credit, was super honest with me. He's like, yeah, I left it till the last minute, and then last night I was watched, I like binge watched something, and uh, just uh, lost track of time, fell asleep on the couch, and I didn't have, I don't have it done. Like, That's kind of irresponsible. Yeah, well, I'll still take it, but I'm penalizing it for late, because it should have been in today, and it's not going to be, and that was it. We got a late now person standing behind him was standing like this. Like, I thought they were literally going to just keel over and die in front of me because they looked like they would have to get better to die. Okay? That's how sick they look. And uh, I'm like, are you okay? Like, no. I'm pretty nauseous. I'm like, okay. What's, what's wrong? Like, well, I don't have my sign. I'm done. Uh, <laughs> okay, back up because I don't want you to project that on me. Okay? 
And uh, she's like, well, last night my parents got in this huge fight and they stormed out of the house, both of them, and they left me to make dinner for my little brother and my little sister. And I made chicken, but I took it out of the freezer and I didn't cook it enough and we all got sick. Being a teacher and a bit of a jerk, the first thing I pointed out is if you hadn't left it till last night to finish, that wouldn't have happened. So there's the, the lesson in all. Don't leave it till the last minute because calamity knows when you've left it till the last minute and it will strike at that time. Okay? Uh, but if those were circumstances kind of beyond your control, I gave her a one day extension. Okay? Didn't give the other guy an extension because he was honest with me and said, look, I just screwed up. No? There's consequences. Screwed up, there's consequences. Okay? All right, so I thought I was fair in that situation, but I didn't treat them equally. They had different, different uh, circumstances. Okay? So if you ever feel that I haven't been fair, then come and talk to me about it after class. Yeah. All right, um, accountability. This is kind of a big one. High school is the start of real life, so due dates and timelines are part of your reality. That means you will be expected and required to hand in material on time and be responsible for your actions. I give plenty of time for assignments to be completed, so there are very few excuses I will accept for not handing in material on time. Okay? In real life, you have to be on time and get your work done, so the same is going to go for you here. Okay? The shortest turnaround you will have for any lab report assignments in my class is two school days. I can't remember the last time I made something do that quickly. Okay? Most of the time, it's like we do a lab on Monday, it's due like Thursday or Friday. Okay? Very rarely is it ever due actually two days later. Okay? And most of the time, there's also a weekend in the middle of that. Okay? So you get plenty of time to get stuff done. I give you class time to work on things. Okay? So you shouldn't be too pressured for time unless you've allowed a lot of things to snowball and suddenly you have a whole bunch to do in a very short period. Okay, so try and plan your time out. I'm going to give you lots of time to help with your time management okay, on things like that. Okay, so you're never going to get something from me and I'm going to say it's due tomorrow. That will never happen in my class. Okay, that doesn't help you learn how to manage your time. Okay, questions there? All right, so to do with your marks, okay? Uh, first thing is, is I will not discuss your marks with you in class in front of everybody else. I can't, okay? It's a FOIA thing. I cannot talk about your marks in front of everybody. So if you have a question about a mark, please come and see me after class or at lunch or something like that. Okay, if you don't understand why you, why you got a mark that you did, okay, then come and talk to me about it, but do it at a time where it's appropriate. Because okay? I've had people come up to my desk and they, you know, they're furious about their mark and there's 30 sets of eyes watching the whole thing. They're like, this mark sucks! And I'm like, yup, it does. Sit. Okay? And that's it. Okay? I, I can't talk to you about your marks in class. Okay? Um, your marks will be distributed according to the syllabus. We'll talk about that in a minute. I've got that at the bottom. Okay? Um, assignments and labs are to be handed in on time. Here's what on time means. The start of class on the due date. Okay? Not the end of the day, not midnight, whatever. Start of class on the due date. Since it's in Google Classroom, okay, when I come in, that, that day or whatever, and you guys come into the classroom, I'll say, hey, look, I've got a few people still haven't handed that in. Please make sure it gets submitted now, because once the due date, the time, the start of class passes, Google will all automatically tag it late. Okay? So make sure that you have it handed in by the start of class on the due date. Okay? Um, that is the only time they can be handed in for full marks. If anything is late, it will be penalized 30%. Here's why. You will always get your work back the next day. Okay? In 22 years of teaching, I have failed to get back an assignment back the next day. Once. On the day that my second son was born, I stand by my decision to hold my wife's hand while she gave birth. Then to sit there with a stack of labs and mark. I stand by that decision. It was the big decision. Okay? And I got them back the day after that. Okay? But I will get them back to you the next day, always. All right? So, yeah, I can't have you handing it in. Oh, well, Mr. Bear just went over everything. No, I'll just hand it in for full marks. Not a chance. Okay? you got to get it in on time. All right. Um, and then, like I said, they're all, all due at the start of class on the due date. Okay. Now, let's have a look at the school map here in terms of 
how movement is going to work for you. Okay, so you saw the video on how we're going to empty the classrooms. Okay, so this is set up. So the gym, which is over there, so this is like the right way for you guys. Okay, we are right here. Okay, that's where you are right now. So when the bell goes for you to transition to period two, you are going to walk down the hallway, okay, and out that back door. Okay, that, that one down there. All right. If you're going to phys ed, then I would suggest you turn, walk up this way, up the path, and come in these doors over here. Okay. Also, if you had to go uh, somewhere, um, like let's say, uh, if you had to come back into the science way, okay, like you had a class in Mr. Dickey's class, next class or something, you would have to go all the way around and come back and then go to Mr. Dickey's class. Okay. That seems a little weird, but we have to have one-way traffic. Okay. If you've got something going on in the math wing, you got a couple of choices. So this is the math wing here, okay, up here on the top. So if I was going to the math wing, I would go around the back of the school, around the back parking lot, okay, and I would probably come in through the theater, okay, come in through the theater, but, okay, then I can turn and I can go down that hallway to one of the classrooms in the math wing. Everybody with me there? Okay, how many people know how to use a traffic circle? Okay, you guys are better at this than my generation was. My generation is horrible at traffic circles, okay, but they're coming back because they're very efficient. The center of our school is a traffic triangle. It works the same as a traffic circle. Traffic goes only one way around it. All right, so you're going to come in, okay, and you've got to rotate around it to go somewhere. Now, if you need to go upstairs, some of the stairwells are for up, and some of the stairwells are for down. Okay? That's going to be important. It's important to know which ones are for which. So near entrances, the stairways are for up. Okay. So um, if you're coming back in through the doors over by the gym, okay, you'll be able to go up those stairs to get to something upstairs. And I'll talk about the upstairs map in a minute. Okay. The stairs that are over by um, the construction uh, area, the shop. Okay. You can access those from the hallway. Okay. You can go up these stairs. Okay. Get to the upstairs. All right, to come down, there's only one set of downstairs, and they are the ones that are just over here, okay, by the theater. Okay, those are the only stairs that go down. All right, um, so if you have to go upstairs, how many people have class upstairs today? Or oh, we're not sure, okay. If we have to go upstairs, Okay, if we're going upstairs, okay, we got two ways we can go upstairs, okay, those two sets of stairwells, okay, the one over by the gym or the one over by the shop, okay, you come up those stairs and the upstairs is also one way, okay, so if you need to go to, to probably an English classroom, okay, then uh, you're going to have to go to the stairs by the shop because if you come up the stairs here, you can't go that way, okay, this hallway only goes this direction. Right, so you come up the stairs by the shop and you'd be able to access any of these classrooms. That's like Mrs. Royce, Miss Bertrand, um, Miss Perry, Mr. Humphrey is up here. Oh, actually, he's here. Okay, if you need to access any of these classrooms, which are social studies classrooms, okay, then um, you would come up the stairs either by the shop because you could turn here or by the gym and you can walk this way. Okay? When you're leaving any of these upstairs classrooms, you walk to the east and go down the stairs by the theater. Okay, so the only downward stairs. You'll get the hang of it, don't worry about it. And we won't yell at you very much when you get it wrong. Okay. Okay, uh, and then we talked about this already. Mrs. O talked about this this morning. Okay, all the screening and monitoring stuff. Okay. Um, okay, so let's talk about the course syllabus here. Okay, so there's four units in Science 10. Okay, the first unit is called Energy and Matter and Chemical Change. We call that chemistry. Okay, um, unit two is Cycling of Matter in Living Systems. We call that biology. Okay, unit three, Energy Flow and Technological Systems. Physics. Okay, and then Energy Flow and Global Systems. We don't know what we call that. Global Systems. It's kind of a hodgepodge of everything. It's very short. Okay, so we're going to start off with chemistry, okay, and we'll be talking about um, like naming ionic and molecular compounds, which will hopefully be review for everybody, 
okay? Uh, structure of the atom, we'll talk about physical and chemical properties, we'll look at chemical reactions, balancing, predicting, they will look at uh, moles as a unit of measurement, mole equation, mole calculations, okay? And that unit will take us to around Thanksgiving, okay? We usually finish it around the beginning of October, okay? Second week of October, somewhere in there, all right? Uh, it does tend to be pretty intense, as you're you know, making the adjustment to high school, you know, how quick everything moves, okay? Science 10 moves really fast, all right? I used to teach Science 9, and I know how fast it moves. If I taught Science 9 at the pace I teach Science 10, I'd be done teaching you Science 9 by the middle of November, okay? This course goes to January. So there's a lot of material, it goes really, really fast. And so you gotta make sure you keep up, you'll get behind quickly. Okay, uh, so that's what we'll cover in, uh, in chemistry. Like I said, be done around Thanksgiving. Okay, biology is the second unit. We talk about microscopes. Hopefully we'll get a chance to use those. We kind of still have to figure out how we're gonna be COVID friendly when we're sharing a microscope, but we'll figure that out. Okay, um, we'll look at cell structure, functions, the cell theory, um, how, materials get transported within the cell and within the full organism. Okay, uh, talking about cell size, shape, surface area to volume, specialization, multicellular organisms, okay, methods of transport in multicellular organisms. Okay, we talk about a lot of the basics that will be built upon in biology 20 and biology 30. Okay, that unit usually takes us up till around um, middle of November, usually around Remembrance Day or so. We finish that one up. Okay. Uh, energy flow and technological systems is physics, so that'll start right after that. That'll take us to Christmas, usually. Okay, like we usually have the exam kind of right before Christmas. Um, and we go over uh, different types of energy, we go over graphing, we go over um, you know, experimental design. Um, there's a lot of um, algebra in physics, okay? So you know, manipulating equations, solve for x when you know that y and z or whatever. Okay, uh, so there'll be a lot of that in that unit, um, and that'll prepare you for um, obviously physics 20. So we'll talk about constant velocity, acceleration. Uh, we'll talk about um, you know work energy theorem, conservation of energy. And there's all kinds of kind of basic but very important concepts for physics in that unit. And then the last unit is like we say very short. Um, I taught it in as few as like five days. Okay, about as many as 12. Um, but it is very short. Um, and it'll be kind of the last two weeks or so of, uh, of the semester. Okay? And in that we talk about um, biomes, uh, solar energy and how it affects life on Earth, okay? wind patterns, water cycle, okay? stuff like that. All right, questions on what's gonna be in the course? Okay, so Mark's distribution here, guys. Um, so your exams are worth the bulk of your mark in this course. Okay, uh, the reason for that is they are the one thing I know is telling me what you know. Okay, all the other things we found lately don't always tell me what you know, they tell me what you and your friends know if you work together, or not that any of you would do this, but what your friend knew when you copied it off of them. So we saw a lot of that during the quarantine. It's like, yeah, hmm, those are exactly the same. Yeah. Which one of you really did it, kind of thing. So. Um, so your assessment is the bulk of it, your unit exams. So you got four unit exams. Each one's 10% of your mark, okay? Uh, your labs, projects, and assignments. So that's your classwork. That'll be lab reports, okay? Research projects, the odd assignment here or there are 30% of your mark, okay? Quizzes, I haven't talked about those yet, but they'll be 10% of your mark. You will have a quiz every Tuesday and every Thursday, the exception being tomorrow, because you won't be here. Um, so, We'll have a quiz every Tuesday and every Thursday unless I tell you otherwise. The quizzes are very short. They take five to 10 minutes tops, okay? Uh, and they are always going to be on the last few days worth of material. So what I do is on Monday night, or Monday right after school and Wednesday right after school, I will post in Google Classroom a practice quiz, which is basically just like the one you're gonna write the next day. It's not exactly the one you're gonna write the next day, but it's pretty close. Okay, so the idea here is you go home that night and you take 10, 15 minutes, okay, to do that quiz, talk it over with your friends, that's fine, see how they did it, and compare your answers, okay, figure it out, come in the next day, I give you a quiz that's on exactly the same material, 
okay, with slightly different questions, and you do well on it, okay? These are 10 easy percent for you to capitalize on for your market, okay? Everybody with me on that? Okay, and then your final exam in January, 20%. Should we have to go into, uh, like we have a second spike and we gotta go back into all this, then obviously this will change because exams will not be there. And I will redistribute the marks and let you know what the redistribution will be, okay? All right, any questions on any of that stuff? Okay, so you got a lot on your plate today, okay? It's, it's Usually the first day is a lot, and you guys have all this extra COVID stuff on top of it, okay? Uh, so it's a lot to take in in a day, I get that, okay? Uh, for today, don't worry too much about, you know, all the course syllabus stuff you're gonna get in other classes. You can always look at that later or ask me later, that's fine, okay? Worry today, not worry, focus today on all the cleaning and all that other fun stuff, okay, that we have to do. All right, uh, the other thing, guys, in terms of how things work in the classroom, um, the bathrooms obviously are right out here, okay? The girls' washroom is right outside the door, okay? The boys' washroom is just down the hall from that, okay? So those are the two closest ones, those are the ones you go and use, okay? And with all this COVID stuff, obviously using them during break is not practical because there can only be two people in there at a time, okay? So if you need to go to the bathroom during class, do not be shy about asking me to use the bathroom, okay? I'm not going to say no, okay? Just go and use it if you use the closest one, okay? Um, Water fountains. Um, honestly, during COVID, I wouldn't drink from the drinking part of the water fountain. I would fill my water bottle from the water bottle filling part of it, okay? Always bring a full water bottle with you each day, okay? Uh, the less you have to fill it here, probably the better, okay? That's one of those high touch, high contact surfaces, okay? Um, at lunchtime, remember, um, there are only certain places where you can eat, okay? That's classrooms, so I kind of pick a classroom. By next week, they're gonna want you to have picked a place that you eat because we have to report who's in our classroom eating lunch, okay? It's again, the contact tracing thing. It's not that we're trying to stalk you or trace, well, we are trying to trace you, but okay. Um, yeah, we just have to know who's in our classroom so we know, okay, this group of kids is together at lunch. If one of them gets sick, then I can say to Alberta Health Services, yeah, these 12 kids were in the classroom with that kid eating lunch, okay? That's just what we have to do. Okay, um, can you have food and drink in here? Yes, you can. Okay, I have no problem with that during class. That's fine, okay. Um, you know, if you're like me and you need a coffee first thing in the morning, I'm okay with you having one, okay. Um, whatever, if you're coming in here every morning with a you know, giant Slurpee and a 500 gram bag of Doritos, I'll probably give you a nutrition lecture, but hey, you can have food in here, that's fine, okay. Um, can you listen to music in here while you're working? Yes, you can. I have no problem with that, as long as it's while you're doing seat work, not obviously while I'm trying to teach you something, okay? So yeah, if you want to listen to your music or whatever uh, during those kind of situations, no problem with that either, okay? Obviously, I have no problem with phones being out in my class. To me, they're a tool. That's where your notes package is, okay? That's where uh, your worksheet packages are, okay? where your assignment sheets are gonna be, okay? All of that kind of stuff, all right? Um, so let's quickly talk about the things that are in Google Classroom for you and how you're going to use those things. Okay, so in the class materials, okay, obviously we already talked about the, the day one package. You've got a periodic table that's in there as well, okay, and you're going to need to use that, right? So if you click on that, okay, uh, you'll see it here. It's got um, like a table of ions or solubility table. On one side, it's got your physics formulas, okay, on here, and then it's got the actual periodic table on the other side, okay? Um, at some point, I'm hoping that I can give you a paper copy of that, but I haven't got the okay on that yet, okay? All right, so we have that, okay, and um, there's a metric system thing, but we won't, we don't worry about that for right now, okay? Then you've got your notes packages, okay? So in the notes packages, Okay, um, I would put these on your phone so that you have them offline, okay? Just in case the Wi-Fi goes down or something like that, you can still access them on your phone, okay? I wouldn't necessarily put them all on there right now. You really only need chemistry right now because we're not doing the other units yet and I've broken it up by unit. So, you know, make sure you have the chemistry notes package on there, okay? Um, so that you can always view that. And then below that, okay, so I'm sorry, the rest of them here, okay, whoops, that's not what I wanted. Um, 
Okay, so oh, those are the worksheet packages. Okay, the other one is the worksheet packages. Okay, and we'll be using the chemistry one. So for right now, if you have the chemistry notes package, the chemistry worksheet package, and the formula, oh, sorry, the uh, periodic table offline, downloaded to your phone. Okay, that's what you're definitely going to need for the next little while. And obviously, you're going to be using your phone to look at those through class. Okay, each and every day here. Okay. Um, and that'll be it. So that's all the stuff that you'll need there. Okay, like we said before, okay, in the stream is where you'll find everything and where I'll post stuff each and every day. Okay, um, yeah. All right, questions on that stuff there? Okay. Any questions from you guys on how any of this stuff is going to work? Okay. How are we feeling right now? A little overwhelmed, still okay. All right, I feel a little overwhelmed. We felt pretty overwhelmed last week when I told us all the stuff we were going to have to do. So, all right, then let's have a look at our first lesson here. So, if you can go to your notes package, pull that up on your phone, okay, and we'll get started. And we're going to talk about lesson one, okay, which is alchemy and atomic models, okay, because we still have about a half an hour of class here today, okay. Um, so whenever we have a lesson where I'm like actively teaching you, okay, um, it'll start out like this. It'll have a lesson number, okay, to correspond to the lesson number in your notes package, okay. And while mine is you know more like PowerPoint-ish, okay, um, yours is going to be more linear, okay. Uh, it's still the same words and most of the same diagrams, okay. But obviously you may want to add stuff, okay, which is why I made it a Google Doc, okay. That Google Doc is yours. Okay, it has your name on it when you open it. Okay, so you can modify it as much as you want, type in extra stuff if you want to, or if you want to have it printed out and write stuff on it, that's fine. Or if you just want to have a notebook and make extra notes in the notebook, that's fine. Okay, but no matter how you have it, whether it's printed or whatever, you should be adding stuff to it okay, as we go along. There's going to be times where I'm going to go, look guys, you should really write this down, or you should add this to your notes. Okay? If I say that, then make sure you've got that file open and you're adding or you're writing it down somewhere. Okay. All right. Uh, the other thing is, whenever I'm teaching, there'll be key points. Okay. The key points are the things you might want to come back and look over when you're studying for a quiz or a unit exam or something like that. So the key points for today, okay, we need to look at the theories okay, of, the, of the atomic theory. We need to look at how the theories of the structure of the atom developed and changed over time and why. And we're going to review the parts of the atom and their characteristics. Okay, so structure and things like that. Okay. So, where did chemistry come from? Okay. Well, chemistry was one of the earlier sciences. Okay. It wasn't a true science for a long time, but we as humans used it okay, to develop technologies that were useful. All right. um, so, alchemy is kind of one of the earlier forms of chemistry. Okay. Now, unfortunately with alchemy, it wasn't science. It was trial and error, and it was like secretive. Okay, uh, alchemists were people who were trying to do things like uh, turn lead into gold, uh, find the elixir of life, you know, that will make you live forever, and things that you know you can't do. Okay, um, but that's what they were trying to do. So they would have had, you know, they would have been your stereotypical wizard-looking kind of. You know, they'd have had a lab that was all dark and had all kinds of fancy-looking glassware and bubbling potions stuff like that. Okay, that's kind of what they did. But in doing all of that, they actually found out a lot about how matter behaves. Okay, so we learned a lot from them after the fact. Okay, so long before the science of chemistry existed, people made use of chemical reactions to dye cloth, to tan leather, prepare foods, okay, like the curing process that we use to keep, um, you know, meats from spoiling. Okay, I mean, that's chemistry. It's adding salt and things like that to slow bacterial growth. Okay, uh, eventually people began to search for expl explanations for the structure and behavior of matter. Okay, as we kind of, you know, got out of the time of our development where our sole focus was putting food on the table every day. Okay, then there was time to think about why things worked. All right, so the, al the, uh, the earliest part of the atomic theory, okay, came from ancient Greece, like many things did, okay? So the earliest atomist, that would be a person who believed all matter was made of atoms, okay, was Democritus, okay? Now, Democritus was a thinker. Okay? And in Greece, being a thinker was the best job you could get, okay? Because you got to sit in the like in the Parthenon, and people would like 
fan you with big palm branches and feed you grapes, and you just had to think stuff up, come up with good ideas, okay? And that was all you had to do. So guys like Plato, okay, uh, they, were, they were thinkers, okay? Democritus was one of them. He proposed that all matter was made of indivisible, not invisible, indivisible. That means you can't split it, okay? Indivisible particles called atoms, okay? His ideas were overshadowed, though, because all the other Greek thinkers said that all matter was made of four things. Earth, fire, water, and air. Okay? Now, though that made sense. Okay? The people of the time, earth, air, fire, and water made lots and lots of sense. Okay? This whole idea of tiny particles you can't see that are indivisible and moving around all the time didn't make any sense to anybody other than Democritus at that time. Okay? Reason for that is the four elements were things people could experience. Okay? In ancient Greece, there were volcanoes. And people had the experience of seeing lava. Okay, well, they were it was explained to them that lava was some parts earth, some parts water, and some parts fire. Made sense, right? It came out of the ground, it flowed like water, but it was really hot, and it could catch things on fire. Okay, so it made sense. Okay, steam was some parts water, some parts fire, and some parts air. Okay, because well, those are the things you mix together when you made it. Right? So they had this kind of logical kind of progression of how the four elements went together to make the things they were familiar with. Okay? So his idea, even though it was correct, was not widely accepted. Okay? So people just said, ah, that's a crappy idea. What else you got? Okay? That wasn't all bad for Democritus, because what else did he come up with? It sounds like his name. Democracy. Democracy. It wasn't all bad. He came up with something else. He just kind of left science and went to you know, the arts. He came up with democracy instead. Okay, um, so the four elements were the earliest idea, okay, but Democritus, he was the first atomist, okay? So Democritus okay, came up with this idea of the atom, okay, but it wasn't taken seriously for about 2,000 years. So unfortunately, he didn't live to see it. Okay, during the Middle Ages, we had the alchemists, okay, the guys we were talking about before. This is like Da Vinci's lab. Okay, that's what an alchemist's lab would look like. It would have had you know, mortars and pestles and beakers and flasks and whatever else okay, uh, all over the place in it. Okay, um, chemistry reappeared, and that was because the alchemists were trying to do things that would get them rich, change common substances into gold, create the elixir of life, which didn't go very well because you know, they were like, hey, drink this silver stuff. Okay, it's mercury. A lot of groups have thought if you drink mercury, it would make you live a long time, but in fact, it does the exact opposite. Um, so they, they did come up, though, with um, a lot of discoveries. Okay? They discovered what kind of things uh, or how the matter behaved, okay? how uh, reactions worked, because they would mix things together and kind of see what happened. Okay? Uh, so they got a lot of experience, and they, they learned a lot of things, which eventually came out. Okay? Unfortunately, the reason alchemy wasn't a true science is there wasn't a sharing of information. I mean, if you came up with a way to turn lead into gold, you didn't want that to get out. Okay? That was something you would keep to yourself so you could get rich. So that was the idea behind the alchemy. Okay? So it wasn't until much later that we learned all the stuff that they learned okay, during that time. All right. Chemistry became a true science when these two guys came along. Okay? Roger Bacon and Antoine Lavoisier. Okay? They came up with the scientific method. All right. So if you've ever done a lab, you, know, you start out with a problem or a question, and you have a hypothesis. Okay? And then you have a procedure that tests it, you have your observations, your analysis, and then your conclusion, and then your sources of error. That's these guys. They came up with that idea. Okay? They took a trial and error thing that alchemists were doing, because you know, an alchemist's job was show up in the lab and go, all right, I haven't mixed that thing and that thing together yet. Today's the day. And that was all they would do. Okay? These guys would say, all right, I'm seeing this thing occurring. I want to test why it occurs. Here's why I think it occurs. That's my hypothesis. Here's how I'm going to test it. That's my procedure. Okay. Here's my results. Those are my observations. What do my observations mean? That's my analysis. Okay. And after that, I draw a conclusion on whether the cause was what I thought it was or not. If it wasn't, then I come up with a new hypothesis. That's the scientific method. And it also involved the sharing of information between people. Okay. So they took alchemy and turned it into a legitimate science, okay? and that kind of paved the way for the experiments that would lead to the atomic theory. All right, so the atomic theory works like this. 
if I have a big lump of a pure substance, so let's say I've got a big chunk of iron, okay? In that chunk of iron, is there anything except iron? No. So every single piece of that chunk of iron is exactly the same, okay? as long as it's pure. Okay? So that means if I kept cutting it smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller, every single piece would have exactly the same properties. Agreed? Okay? The idea here is that if you could continue cutting it smaller and smaller and smaller, there would eventually come a point where you couldn't cut the pieces any smaller and still have iron. Okay? Now, luckily for us, you can't split an atom by trying to cut something. Okay? Otherwise, there'd be mushroom clouds every time you chop carrots. All right? Knives okay, don't cut atoms. Atoms are incredibly small. The sharp edge of your knife is like thousands to millions of atoms wide. Right? You're not going to be splitting the atom when you make soup. Okay? Um, but the idea is that if you cut something smaller and smaller and smaller, eventually you'll get to the point where if you cut that last piece, now I've cut the atom. Okay? If I take an atom of iron and I cut it in half, is it still an atom of iron? No. Okay, now it isn't an atom of iron. Now it doesn't have the same properties as before. Okay, that's what happens in nuclear fission. When you split an atom, you fundamentally change what it is. Okay, you're taking pieces of it off, protons and neutrons and whatever else, okay? and you're changing it fundamentally. All right, so an atom, and this is an important sentence, so, so you might want to underline it, is the smallest particle of an element that still retains the properties of that element. Okay, so every atom of iron in that lump of iron I have is exactly the same. It's got the same number of protons. Okay, most of them will have the same number of neutrons, the same number of electrons. And as a result, they will all have the same properties. Okay, so if we look at our periodic table, we can kind of see how that would work. Okay, an atom of iron, okay, um, has 26 protons in it. Okay, that's what the atomic number means. It tells you how many protons are in the nucleus of, the, of an atom. Okay, so an iron atom has 26. Okay, but an oxygen atom has eight. Our iron and oxygen are quite a bit different. They are. I mean, one's a gas, okay, and one's a salt. Okay, one's metallic, one's non-metallic. Okay, they're different. Okay, um, so late 1700s, chemists of all varieties are doing experiments with chemical reactions and they're learning how matter behaves, okay? And what they're seeing is certain patterns, okay? They're seeing patterns of behavior that are um, indicating to a lot of them that matter is made of pieces, very small pieces that move around, okay? And that's helping them to explain why reactions work the way they do and why the alchemists were never able to do what they said they wanted to which was turned lead into gold, okay? The alchemists thought they'd be able to do that because when they mixed things, they found that the things they started with would change into something else after they reacted, okay? What they didn't understand was they weren't changing an element from one element to another. They were either combining elements into a compound or they were taking compounds and rearranging the pieces of them into new compounds. They weren't fundamentally changing what they had. They just didn't understand that at that time. Okay? But chemists were starting to get this idea that there are pieces of matter and they can move around, they can do certain things, but they can't change from one thing to another. Okay? The reason you can't change lead into gold, lead and gold are both elements. They are, this, they are kind of a fundamental form of matter. Okay? I can't change lead into gold because to do that I would have to take the lead atoms and take a whole bunch of protons off of them okay, to change them into gold. Okay, because they're different numbers, right? Gold's 79, lead's 82. Okay, so I'd have to take three protons off of every single lead atom and a whole bunch of neutrons in order to make it gold. Is that something I can do? Not something I can do. Not something modern science can do. Certainly not something the alchemists can do. Okay, but if I take a couple of things and make them react, I can make it look like I've done that. Okay, so for example, if I was to react Let's say let's take I take an atom of sodium and I react it with a molecule of chlorine. Okay? Those two things can react, go together, and make a 
make that stuff. What's that? So, yeah, sodium chloride. Okay? So if I was an alchemist and I performed this reaction, I took a highly reactive soft silvery metal, reacted it with a green gas, and got clear crystals. Okay? That could lead me to believe that I could turn one thing into another if I didn't understand what was going on at an atomic level when those things mixed together. Okay? Now, okay, in the 1700s, okay, scientists were starting to get the idea that matter didn't change, it just moved around. Okay? And that's kind of where the atomic theory came from. Right? So the atomic theory has four points. Okay? And those four points were devised by John Dalton. So this guy, he's important. He came up with the atomic theory. Okay? You only re really need to know the last name, Dalton. Okay? So his atomic theory included the, the following ideas. First off, Democritus' idea. All elements are composed of tiny, indivisible particles called atoms. Okay? So credit to Democritus, that was his idea. Okay? The second thing that Dalton said was atoms of the same element are identical. So when we're talking about the lump of iron, every single piece of that iron is identical. Okay? The atoms of any one element are different from atoms of any other. Okay, so that's why we said oxygen atoms are different than iron atoms, lead are different than gold. Okay? Okay, and um, for number three, number three talks about how chemical reactions occur, okay, or what happens in a chemical reaction. So atoms of different elements can combine with one another in simple whole number ratios to form compounds. Okay, so that would be this reaction here. Okay, I took this element, I combined it with this element, and I made a compound. Right? Now, in order to make this reaction actually work, I would need two elements or two atoms of, of sodium, one molecule of chlorine, okay, and that would give me two molecules of sodium chloride. Okay? I still have two atoms of sodium on both sides and two atoms of chlorine on both sides. Okay? So I haven't created any matter, I haven't destroyed any matter, but what I did is I took two elements and I combined them to form a compound. Okay? The key here is that I didn't get anything new. It looks like I got something new, but in the end, I still have the same things I started with, sodium and chlorine. Okay, you want to follow me there? I didn't magically get copper out of this. Okay, I didn't form any new elements. All right, so they could be, okay, they could combine in whole number ratios. The other thing that means, or what that means is, I never get like a half of an atom, okay, in a compound. Like water is H2O. Right? I would never write water like this. HO one half. Right? It's the same ratio, it's still two to one. But that means I have half an oxygen atom. I can't have half an oxygen atom. It's not oxygen, it's only half the atom. Okay? So they're always in whole number ratios. So it's always two to one, three to one, two, you know, one to one, whatever. Okay? They're always going to go in a whole number. All right, and then the last point is the one that put the nail in the coffin for the alchemists, okay? Chemical reactions occur when atoms are separated, joined, or rearranged. However, atoms of one element are not changed into atoms of another element in a chemical reaction, okay? So this is an example of a reaction where two atoms are joined, okay? This would be an example of a reaction where atoms are separated. Okay, that's the electrolysis of water. Okay? When, you run a, when you arc electricity through water, it'll actually separate the hydrogen and oxygen atoms. Okay, so in that case, the atoms are separated. Okay, here they're joined, and they could also be rearranged. Okay, so um, I could have a reaction like this. Um, So in a reaction like this, okay, I've taken um, two compounds and I've reacted them. Did I make any new elements? I still have H and Cl, Na and O. All I've done is rearrange. 
arrange them, okay? Give them new partners. Right that idea. Right, that's what was wrong with that one. That should have been a two. No, that could be a two. No. Okay, making sense? All right, so that's the points of the atomic theory. We're gonna leave it at that for today because I wanna kind of walk you through what you're gonna do here in a couple of minutes, okay? So for your next transition. Okay, since we got to go outside the classroom for that, okay, we're going to mask up and then we're going to come back here. You can leave your stuff here for now, we're just going to do a practice. Okay?